Good morning, church. Glad to see you all this morning, enjoying the good fellowship in the Lord. Amen. Would you stand with us as we turn our minds and hearts toward our Heavenly Father this morning? Prepare our hearts to worship you. The ever faithful, ever true. Forgive our sin and make us new. Prepare our hearts to worship you. Prepare our hearts for holy ground. Let our Come do what only you can do. Prepare our hearts to worship Prepare our hearts to worship you. Be ever faithful. Give our sin and make us new. Prepare our hearts to worship you. Prepare our hearts for holy ground. Let our defenses tumble down. Come to what? be seated. We want to welcome you to Bethsaida Baptist Church this morning. My name is uh, Brad Ball, the pastor. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you here. We're so glad you took time to join us, whether in person or online. If you're in person, there is a little 
card there in uh, your pew rack there, and all we're asking for is a name, just email address, phone number. If you got any interest in church or anything, prayer requests, just mark it on those, and you can put them in these brown boxes, one back there, one up here. If you're online or if you're here and you don't want to do that but want to do something digital, just go to our website. It says contact us. All you do is go down and put whatever information you like, whether baptism, salvation, prayer requests, whatever. Uh, and so we'd love to do that any way we can minister to you. Just please uh, let us know. And so we're just so glad to have you here today because we're just here uh, to be passionate about life change and ultimately help all of us make disciples that will ultimately make disciples. And so we're just so glad to have you here today. Let me just give you a couple announcements very quickly. October 27th, we're going to have another prayer night of prayer walking. And so if you weren't able to be at the last one, I encourage you to try to make this one to be on a Wednesday night. And so we'll be going over that while we're going to be praying. Uh, well, number one, we need to pray. Uh, number two, we'll be having a truck or treat on the 30th. And so we want to surround this campus with prayer and pray for God's presence to be with us. Any way you can help with that, donate serve you don't have to do a trunk hey you're, you're gifted and can come up with a game it don't matter that's good too and so uh, if you can sign up let us know uh we want to reach out to our community minister our community share the love of jesus with them hang out and with people in our community and just uh, love on them by serving them so giving a really a safe environment for our families to come to okay so that'll be the 30th, 530 to 8. And so again, we're just so glad uh, to have you here today. We want to worship God. And hopefully, Scripture talks about how we're to worship God with clean hands, pure heart. And that's what we're to strive for. And so I'm just going to lead us here in prayer in just a second and ask God, just speak to our hearts so that we might be able to hear from God. And if we have clean hands, pure heart, we got our hands open. Okay, if you've got your hands open, what can you receive? Whatever God has for you. So let's go, Lord, in prayer and ask for his hand to be upon this service. Dear Heavenly Father, we do love you and we do praise you. You are a great God and a loving God. We truly do adore you. And Lord, we do want to worship you today with clean hands and pure hearts. Lord, if there's anything in our lives, you would just bring it to our thoughts so that we can come clean before you. And Lord, we are grateful that you freely want to forgive us of sin if we'll just come and confess to you. So Lord, we just ask that you'd meet with us today. We pray that you'd be pleased to show up, that we might experience your presence here this morning that your spirit would have the freedom to work. Lord, we pray for Sam and the band that you would just use them to usher us into your presence. Lord, as we uh, sing this morning, may it be for the audience of one and just you, Lord. Nobody else. And so, Lord, may it help us to be aware of you this morning, Lord. Help us to be aware that you want to speak to us. And so, Lord, we just pray that we would encounter you this morning in worship. And so, Lord, I ask that you would just, again, just bless everything in this service. May everything point people to you through the music and the message. And so, Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, I want to ask you a question, a thought that I left the youth with this morning. Just think about this. Why are you here today? Truly. What was your motivation for getting up and coming into this house? I pray that it's what Brad just prayed, that we encounter God himself while we're here. That we didn't do it out of habit. Why are you here today? Just think about that as we worship. Amen. Would you stand with us, church? Above all power, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above 
every sun beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and I will build my life upon your love honor him this morning church <laughs> amen God is good amen amen all the time God is good amen <laughs> I count on one same God that never failed will not fail me now. You won't fail me now and in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I Bless your name, oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, oh yes, I will. That's right, come on. I count on one. Same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now and in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Oh yes, I will get you high in the lowest valley. I'm 
All God's people said, amen. amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Sam and, and uh, band for leading us in worship, leading us um, to the throne of God uh, where we can worship Him uh, and praise Him. And so, all right, kids, time for y'all go praise the Lord and worship Him. All right. All righty. Uh, can anybody sell me their energy real quick? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they are uh, wired up. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So, uh, so let's uh, uh, let's go, to Lord, in prayer. Uh, Brother Philip, can you come lead us in prayer uh, as we just go before the Lord uh, and get into His Word? And so, um, if you can just lead us in prayer today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just come to you today with thanksgiving, dear Heavenly Father, for all your precious time and your love that you showed us in the past week, dear Heavenly Father. Just be with us now as we go into this worship service. Dear Heavenly Father, open our hearts for a better understanding of your word. Just hide Brother Brad behind the cross. Send your words through him, dear Heavenly Father, that, that uh, we all will be touched. You know the needs of everyone in here, dear Heavenly Father. Just be with us now through this service. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Again, thank you, Brother Sam, for leading us in worship. If you do need an outline, raise your hand. Uh, we got some... Uh, Guys here will get you one here, and uh, thank them for serving and, and being willing to get you one. And so, uh, again, thank you, Brother Sam and Van, for just leading us in worship and reminding us of why we're here. Now, the cleaning business, some of you may be in the cleaning business, but the cleaning business is a very bu busy business now with uh, the apocalypse and everything. And even in our own homes, uh, several hours a week, we do what? We spend time cleaning the house, maybe uh, uh, vacuuming, mopping floors, dusting, whatever it might be, cleaning dishes, all that pretty big. And ultimately, it's a big business now, cleaning. I mean, commercial business, even residential uh, cleaning is big business. Actually, uh, last year brought in like about $46 billion. Pretty big business. They say by 2026, uh, it'll probably double by 10%. And all of us wish we had bought some money in hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes before the apocalypse, right? Uh, because all those cleaning items have gone out the roof as far as trying to get them or the cost of them, right? Now, today I want to talk to you about spring cleaning. Now, many of you may use that term. Uh, you go and after a winter, you go throughout the house and you have some spring cleaning. But today I want to talk to you about spiritual spring cleaning and how you and I need to be about cleaning spiritually. Now, today Jesus' the statement we're going to look at today is a bold, bold statement that he challenges us with. And uh, it was probably a shocking statement to them, and it might even be a shocking statement to you today. 
And so we're going to be uh, in Matthew 5, we're looking at the, the Beatitudes, we'll look at one today, but let's look at where we've been, we're going to read, and we'll get to our verse in verse 8. It says, verse 5, blessed are what? The poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And that's our verse. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So the target of this message is for you and I to understand this. God is interested in our hearts being clean spiritually. Okay? He's interested in our hearts being clean spiritually. Now just to remind you, maybe you're a guest with us, let me just remind you what this word blessed means. It says blessed is the pure in heart. The word blessed means favored by God. It describes a person that God approves, a lifestyle, an attitude, kingdom living that God approves of. Now again, these kingdom attitudes are for all of us to live out as Christ followers. And again, they're kind of like stair steps. Each one adds on to the next one. Now the thing is, if you want to see one that lived out the Beatitudes perfectly, well, just look at the life of Jesus. You'll see him living out these Beatitudes everywhere throughout the Gospels perfectly. Now let me just recap these, these uh, five kingdom attitudes that we've looked at. Number one, we poor in spirit is what? We've got to admit our spiritual bankruptcy. We're spiritual poverty. We admit our total dependence upon God. Mourn means you grieve over your sin in your life, which leads to genuine repentance. The word meekness is not weakness. It's power or strength under the control of Christ. Christ followers are hunger and thirst for righteousness, which is what? Hey, we're to have a healthy spiritual appetite that we talked about. Then we talked about that one uh, statement. Tozer said, you can have as much of God as you want. And these kingdom attitudes are about you can have as much of God as you want. And last week we talked about how mercy, uh, you, you might think, was an easy <laughs> uh, one, but it's not. That's a challenge, really. Mercy is what? Love and compassion in an action. And today we're going to talk about the pure in heart. Now the word there, pure, uh, this is what it means. Very simple, and we'll talk about more of what it means throughout this message but a simple definition, it means clean and unmixed. Clean and unmixed. It means to be free from corrupt desire, sin, and guilt. Freedom from every mixture of what is false. Now, Dan, I want to give you five elements. If you're going to be about being pure in the heart, you're going to have some spiritual spring cleaning, which we all have to have. Okay, if you think you're in the house and you don't need any spring cleaning, uh, you already need some. Because uh, we all need it. And again, I don't know about you, but these, these kingdom attitudes, they're challenging for all of us, okay? Because it's where we live every single day. They're a challenge for every one of us and where we're living and how we're living for Christ. So number one, the first element is this. You must receive salvation from God. You must receive salvation from God. He says, uh, blessed are the pure in heart. Now, he's not talking about your heart that goes pump, pump, pump. Actually, that word is talking about the core of you as an individual person. It's talking about the seed of your personality. It's talking about the total, totality of your mind, emotion, and will. It's really talking about the real you. It, your heart is really the steering wheel of your life. And your heart will dictate your, your character, it will direct your will, and it will dominate your character, I mean your affections and how you live. Now, when it comes to salvation... All of us spiritually need a heart transplant. You say, why do I need a heart transplant? Can't I just come to church and be good enough? No, the Bible says there, there is a difference between religion and a relationship with Jesus Christ. See, reformation is not enough. There must be regeneration which comes from God. You know, if a drug addict gives up drugs without getting saved all he is is sober 
but he'll still go to hell because he rejected Christ. See, the problem is not on the outside. We think it's all about the outside. It's on the inside that we need to change. Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That word deceitful is actually the same word used for the name of Jacob, which means supplanter or con artist. Our heart can con us into thinking that we're good and we can get to heaven on our own and we're good enough to get there. But under the promise of the new covenant in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh. See, none of us are born pure in heart. See, when God saves you, He gives you a new heart. Praise God. And we cannot be pure in heart without a new heart. And so let me just tell you how you can get a new heart spiritually right through these kingdom attitudes. Number one, you've got to understand, again, as I already mentioned, you're a bankrupt sinner. We're all bankrupt. And the only way we can be spiritually full and have a new heart is to realize, man, hey, I cannot get to heaven on my own. I've got to be totally dependent upon Christ. Then that must lead you to be broken over your sin. Why? Because you're a sinner and because of your sins put Jesus on the cross. And because your sin and my sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. Which means you've got to come to a place and realize, man, I've got to yield myself and I've got to take control of my life and give it to Christ. Amen. And when... God starts speaking and stirring in your life, and the Holy Spirit starts working. You realize, man, i got a hunger for something I never had in me. And what is that? That's righteousness. And where does that righteousness come from? It comes from Jesus. And the only way that can happen in your life is for you to receive mercy. Now, what is that? God gives me what I don't deserve. How do I receive that mercy? By faith and turning from my sins, putting my faith and trust in, Lord, what is mercy? What, what did God, he didn't give me what I deserve. What do I deserve? I deserve death and hell. But he offers to me, praise God, <laughs> eternal life, blessings, faith. And then he says, all right, now when you come to that point, then I'm going to put a new heart in you. I'm going to put a pure heart within you. I'm going to change that heart of, of rebellion. I'm going to change that heart of stone. And I'm going to put a new heart within you, praise God. See, that's the great news. God can take that heart of stone, your rebellion, you've been going your own way, and can lift that up and put it in a new heart. And it's a spiritual transplant. You can't do it yourself. Can you do a heart cath on yourself? No. You spiritually can't do a heart cath on yourself. That only comes... From God. It's a work of God. He cleans you up. See, the heart is very important. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this, If you confess through your mouth what Jesus is Lord and believe in what your heart, that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. It says what one believes with the heart resulting in righteousness and con one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. See, you've you got to first have a new heart. And that only comes from God. Through His Son, Jesus. So, Number one, you, get, you must receive salvation from God. Second element is this, is you must purge sin in your life. You must purge sin in your life. This is the second element. The word pure also means to, to purge by cleansing. It means a cleansing of one's mind and emotions. It's the picture of removing dirt, filth, and sin out of our lives. See, the Greek word here for pure was used back then to talk about metals and how they would refine the metal until all the impurities had been removed, leaving only what? Pure metal. So that's why this word purity means unmixed. It doesn't have anything else mixed in it. Because it's pure from Christ. And that's why we've got to purge ourselves from sin. Because too much we get mixed up with the world. You know what I'm saying? Let me illustrate like this a couple ways. You ever gone to a Mexican restaurant? I'm sure you have. What do they bring out first? Chips. And what? Salsa. And what do some other people like? Cheese dip. 
Now, have you ever gone double dipping and got some of the cheese dip and the salsa and you keep going back and forth? What happens? It's really mixed up. Almost to where which one is the salsa and which one is the cheese dip. Be the same way at a family meal. Let's say you had apple butter and butter. And you had nice rolls there, you know, the hot rolls. And, and you only had one knife. And everybody was having a dip in each one. Whether they want apple butter or butter before long, you wouldn't know which one is either. See, that's what happens when sin gets in our lives. We kind of get mixed up. And that's why we need to be purged of sin. Say, why? Because from our hearts comes our motives, our goals, our desires, and our emotions. Jesus put it like this in, in Mark 7. It's not up there, but just write this down. Mark 7, 20 through 23. I'm not going to read everything. But he says, what comes out of a person? What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within... Out of people's hearts come, and he goes on, evil thoughts, sexual murder, and he goes through this long list. And he says, all these evil things, what? Come from within and defile the person. See, God wants us to have a pure heart. He gives us a pure heart at salvation, but then we've got to be faithful to confess sins and come clean before him all the time. The Scripture didn't say, blessed are the outwardly clean. didn't say that. It's blessed are what? The pure in heart. So now, what happened is, in Jesus' day, you had some Pharisees who were the religious people. Uh, man, they knew the law. They tried to do all the stuff by the law. But Jesus said, the problem with you is you're so focused on looking the part and trying to impress people with your religiosity that you're clean on the outside but dirty on the inside. So why is the heart so important? Remember 1 Samuel 16, the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at the appearance or at the height of his stature referring to Saul because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees. For man looks at what? The outward appearance. But God looks at what? The heart. And that's why he's saying, blessed are the pure in heart. Why? Because sin can blind us so easily, folks. It really can. All of us. It can blind us. And that's why we've got to seek God and go to God and confess our sins and seek His cleansing and seek Purging. That's why in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, he says, Let us cleanse ourselves from what? Every impurity of flesh and spirit. Cleanse ourselves every day of every impurity. See, what happens is when those impurities get in our lives and we don't seek forgiveness, it's hard to tell whether you're the cheese dip or the salsa. And are you living as a Christ follower or have you gotten so blended in with the world that nobody can tell the difference? That's why Proverbs, Solomon said this. You know, did Solomon heed, his, <laughs> heed this text all the time? No, he didn't. He said, Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart with all diligence, with everything. Why? For out of it spring the issues of life. If we guard it and, and give everything to God and seek, and when we do sin, we seek forgiveness like that, and we seek and we have cleansing, God can use us. But when we don't, everything gets awful muddied up. So we got to purge sin in our lives by going to Christ. Number two, you got to receive salvation. Number three, you must be sincere in your motives. And he says, Blessed are the pure in the heart. This word can also talk about our thoughts, our motives, our will. Martin Lloyd-Jones said this, he paraphrased this verse. He, he said, blessed are those who are pure, not only on the surface, but in the center of their being and at the source of every activity. That's what the pure in heart means. 
where we're sincere. He's at every thought, every motive, every action. Now, what's the opposite of um, pure motives? Pure heart. would be hypocrisy, right? He's talking about integrity here. Why did God hold up David as an example compared with Saul? David had integrity. Now, was he perfect? No. But how was he referred to? Man after God's own heart. Why did God reject Saul? Because he didn't have any integrity. He did what he thought was good in his own eyes. And so this word here, pure, can, means unmixed, always entirely unmixed, which means we're to have, be sincere in our motives. Now, what's amazing is, and we haven't really been able to go into this, but if you read the Sermon on the Mount, many times Jesus will take these Beatitudes and then explain them a little bit further on in this sermon. And so today I want to go to this because it really ties in being sincere in your motives. So we're going to be in Matthew 6 going to look at a few verses here as Jesus talks about uh, how we're to be pure in heart and how it's displayed, displayed in our lives. He says, number, verse 1, Matthew 6, you got your Bible open, should just be able to turn over one little page there. He says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor, don't sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets to be applauded by. Look at those people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you give to the poor, don't let your, right, your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Because they love to pray, what? Standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, what? They have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room and shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who, what? Sees in secret will reward you. Now move down to verse 16 through 18. He says, whenever you fast, which means you will fast, don't be gloomy like the hypocrites. For what? They disfigure their faces so that their fasting is obvious to people. They were just putting on the show, you know. But he says, truly I tell you, they have what? Their reward. But he says, but when you fast, basically saying put oil on your face and wash your face, he's saying clean up so that your fasting isn't obvious to others, but to your Father who is in secret. And what? And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Jesus talked to them about having righteous acts, having acts of mercy or benevolence. Then he talks about how we're to pray and we're to fast, but we're to be sincere in our motives. Now he's talking about the Pharisees. He says, man, they're hypocrites because they're wanting to be seen. So they what? They have their reward now. Now, what is a hypocrite? Someone who is pretending to be something. They're playing a part. You have the sin of pretense in Acts 5, if you remember the story. You've got Ananias and Sapphira, they come in. They're pretending. They walked in and said, hey, we gave the full amount, we fully surrendered, but they really only partially surrendered. And if you remember, because they lied to the Holy Spirit, they died on the spot. And they carried them out to the cemetery. See, what Jesus is trying to get us to understand is God sees everything that's done in secret. Did, did you, I tried to emphasize, did you, did you notice that Three times Jesus said something there. Three times is very important. He said what? Your father who sees in secret will reward you. 
God sees in secret every desire, every passion, every decision that we do. And if you've got pure motives and a sincere motive, hey, I just want to praise God, I just want to serve God, I just want to do what God's called me to do. I just want to do what God's gifted me to do. I just want to be available to whatever opportunities God gives me, and I just want Him to be, receive the glory. It says what? Don't go around tooting your horn. That's what he's saying. Don't go around and say, well, you know, Sam, uh, man, I, it's been amazing 40 days. I, I've just prayed and fasted for 40 days. I'm really, man, that's made. I'm really spiritual. God says, uh, you just got your reward. The applause of man. Or trying to impress man. Now, that's easier said than done, right? Because we all want, right? We all do. But I like the way he says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. If God wants it to be known, he'll let it be known. And so understand, if you think you're hiding something from God today, you're, you will not hide it from God. Father sees everything. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. God sees everything. Hebrews 4.13 says, Hey, no creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So we're going to give an account. But do we have sincere motives? See, purity of heart means, hey, man, I'm sold out to God. I, I want to have sincere motives. I, I'm striving to live a clean life and allow God to purge me from my sins because, why? Wow, he's changed my life. Amen. Number four, you must have single-minded devotion to Christ. Single-minded devotion to Christ. Now, this word pure can also mean a unity of singleness of heart. Single-minded. What's the opposite of single-minded? Well, it would be a divided heart, or double-minded. See, God wants us to be have pure motives, single-minded devotion to Him, undivided attention to Him. Now, double-mindedness has always plagued the church. So what do you mean? And we've all done this too. If you've been saved a little while, now if you just got saved recently, you, you probably haven't been in that. But what do we try to do? We try to wade out and live in the world and do some of the things that we want to do in the world, but still try to be a Christ follower all at the same time. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to mix. We're trying to uh, kind of walk in the center and live a little bit over here and a little bit over here. You know what Jesus says? He says it in the same Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 6, 24, he says what? No one can serve two masters. You'll either be the devoted one or despise the other. He says you cannot serve both God and money. You'll either serve the Lord or you'll serve whatever else you want to put over here. And so what Jesus is saying here, man, we need to have pure, unmixed devotion to God. No hidden agendas, no double motives, no self-interest. Just I want to do everything to follow God. Now how does that happen? Striving to live with clean hands, pure hearts. James said it like this in James 4. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Too many times we get double-minded. We want to live, I want to live here with Christ, but I also want to follow and do things of the world. And because of that, we're not single-minded, devoted to Him. We're trying to walk a tightrope and we're really not having any joy in either one of those. And see, he's called us to be single-minded devotion to him. So see, to be a man or woman after God's own heart, 
you got to be devoted to him. Say, all right, God, you, you gave me this job. You gave me these skills. You, 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 you've given me this family uh, uh, to, to lead and to pour into as a, a mother, as a father. God has given you all of that. He's gifted you with all of that. So what? So that you might be devoted to him, that you might live for him, that you might strive to live a life pure in heart so that you might be able to be used greatly. But for that to happen, you've got to have a single-minded devotion. So many times we're chasing everything and everything, right? But instead of being single-minded, devoted to Christ. And for that to happen, you've got to realize, man, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I need to be purged of sins every day. Lord, I, I want to have sincere motives. I want to serve you, not so people will applaud in me and give me all this. I want to serve you because you love me enough to save me and give me a pure heart. Amen. Number five, the fifth element is this. Is you must be conscious of the presence of God. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, I do think in one essence... This is referring to heaven, okay? Future tense in the end. Everybody that's given their lives to Christ, their name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, praise God. One day we will see God. Actually, everybody will see God. <laughs> this is my hope and prayer. He says, all right, welcome in, my child. Instead, I don't know you. But this, this verb here, they will see is future tense, but it's also a future continuance tense. MacArthur states it like this, they shall be continually seeing God for themselves. You know what happens when your heart's purified at salvation? Now you live in the presence of God. What do you mean? Well, if you gave your life to Christ... Christ came to live within you, and His Holy Spirit now dwells within you. And your body is the home of the Holy Spirit, or the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit resides. So you do live in the, the presence of God. It's just a matter of whether you're conscious of the presence of God. See, being aware of the presence of God every day is a spiritual mark of maturity in your life where you realize, man, God is working. Where you start looking at things with a spiritual eye. Where you start seeing things through God's filter instead of your own filter. So that's where God wants us, where we're, we're living in the presence of God. You say, Brad, I'm not totally know if I'm there yet. Just pray, God, make me more conscious of your presence every day. It's kind of like last week. <laughs> this is very convicting stuff, folks. <laughs> what did I say? Everybody you see is an image bearer. And you're going to show them love and compassion in action. Just like you're a Christ follower, you're to be aware of the presence of God every single day. Just not on Sunday when we come into the house of God. See, what you and I have to ask God is, Lord, help me to be in tune with you every day. Because some days we get so wrapped up in everything going on in our lives, and we all have a lot going on. And you can get hit with stress here, stress there, stress there. And if you're not aware of the presence of God, you don't react to that stress in the Spirit, you act in hell. Flesh. Man, when you start seeing things with spiritual eyes, you're going to see, oh, wow. That was God at work today. God worked that out. I thought this was going to blow up right in front of me. And God brought by the, the right person at the right time, and he solved the problem. Man, when you're stuck aware of the conscience of God every day, you're like, wow, that was God that just spoke to me from His inspired Word. That He actually spoke a word to me. 
for my life, my situation. Right where I'm living. It wasn't a word for somebody. It was a word for me. He gave me a rhema word to speak into my heart that He loves me, cares about me, and is not going to kick me to the curb. See, when you start becoming aware of that conscious presence, you start seeing Him jump off the page. You start seeing Him. Well, He answered that prayer request. I was asking Him to work in my child's life, and He actually did. So maybe start laying on hands on your child and your children and pray you're getting frustrated with them and want to hang them up from the rafters. Start praying for them that God will work in their life. And you might be amazed this week how God all of a sudden slowly starts to change their heart. See, a lot of times you and I, just just be honest, we're just not aware of the conscious presence of God. What do we need in our services? Awareness of the conscious presence of God. But many times we just kind of blend in. Like, Pastor, I know that's just a little bit too radical living for me. Keep living that uh, hamster wheel. Flesh, spirit, flesh, spirit. Never think about God. Tell me how it goes for you down the road. There's a pastor in England. Had this small, white, highland terrier. Pristine white. This pastor and his wife, they love to keep this dog just, you know, clean and pampered. How some people keep their dogs and others of us, we wash them whenever. Okay? You know what I'm saying? But I mean, this pastor's wife, they kept this white Highland Terry. I mean, it was pristine white. They would even put powder on it and make it look all that and spend hundreds of dollars to get the fine haircut and everything. And one night he hit snow, just, you know, you don't know, you've seen pictures of it. <laughs> if you haven't seen it in person, you know what I'm talking about. But I mean, you know, that, that, that snow at night, and you wake up, and there's not been anything out there on the snow. And it's just like, whoa, just pristine white. And the pastor's looking out at the window, and all of a sudden he sees this dog walking out in the yard, in the snow. And he was like, well, whose dog is that? That's not a pristine white dog. And then he realized his, his daughter had let out his dog. And even though they tried to keep it all pure compared to the white driven snow, there was no comparison. See, if we're going to draw near to Christ... That means we've got to get closer to Christ. Because when we live in the world, we kind of blend in, and we're no longer that kind of pure white. It's now kind of gray. But if we're going to try to be like Christ, then we've got to seek to stay close to Him. So that what? We might reflect Him. Not perfect but that we might reflect Him. And that only comes from salvation. That only comes from having the right motives. It only comes from a single-minded devotion. It only comes from you and I being conscious of His presence every day. And so the question I have for you today is do you need some spiritual spring cleaning? Because Jesus wants us all to walk and look like Him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you. And Lord, I just want to read one passage as we enter into your presence of prayer. Lord, you tell us in Psalm 139, Search me, God, and know my heart. 
and know my concerns. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Some of you here today or maybe online, you're like, Brad, my, my heart's not pure because I've never given my life to Christ. I've never become a follower of Jesus. If you've never done that, i got some good news. You can walk out of here with a pure heart. You can walk out of here with a heart transplant spiritually. And if you're online, in person, I invite you to do that. To say, what do I have to do, Brad? I'm not talking about joining a church or doing some things or being even baptized. I'm talking about you surrendering your life to Christ. And if that's you today, I invite you to pray uh, silently in your heart to God if you're with us or online. If you're by yourself, pray it out loud. God will hear you. But you may just want to pray, Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've blown it, broken your laws. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son Jesus, the perfect, sinless son of God to die on the cross for my sins and that he was buried in the tomb and that he rose again on the third day and that he's alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now to come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins and be my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and giving me a new heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed, nobody praying, uh, nobody looking around. Anybody, maybe pray that prayer with me this morning. If you said, hey, I prayed that, would you just raise your hand? Anybody this morning say, man, I gave my life to Christ. Anybody. If you're online, just let us know. Anyway, contact us. We'd love to encourage you. But Lord, let me pray for every Christ follower. Lord, I pray you'd speak to our hearts right now. Lord, if there's any sin in our lives, Lord, I pray we would confess it right now so that we can leave out of here with clean hands, pure hearts, and that we can walk out of here aware of your conscious presence. And so, Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit might have the control to work in all of our lives right now and help us be aware of how you want to move in this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't know Jesus, again, we'd love to share with you. Uh, we encourage you to come forward. We'll have someone talk with you. Maybe you want to come. Maybe you got burdens. I don't know. great place to bring them is come to the altar and say, hey, here it is, Lord. I don't know what to do, but Lord, I'm praying today. I'm giving it to you. Lord, help me to be aware of your conscious presence so I know what you want to do in my life and my family. Whatever God's telling you to do, we're just going to invite you to stand. Sam and the band are going to lead us, but you be obedient to God.
How sweet the sound Amazing love Now flowing down From hands and feet That were nailed to the tree As grace flows down It covers me It covers me y'all for praying and allowing people to come and just spend time with the Lord. Hope and pray you've heard from the Lord and maybe he's given you a word or maybe answered a prayer or given you encouragement. I don't know what, but I know God in a service can do all of those Amen. and speak to you in a variety of ways that we can't even fathom. That's how great our God is. So, so just to encourage you, on Wednesday nights, uh, we're in the series Fight the Good Fight, going through 2 Timothy. We also have children's ministry going on, and so I encourage you to have kids. Uh, they're doing a lot of neat things, so if you'll get involved with that. And like I said, uh, sign up for Trunk or Treat if you can help in any way, or donate candy or anything. Anything you can do would be greatly appreciated. Amen? Amen. All right, Brother Sam. That's Amen. It. Praise the Lord. Church. Thank you, Brother Brad. Good word. Brother Matt, did you need to come?
Thank you, church. Just want to mention real quick, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, uh, best day of the band will be at Mount Zion Baptist Church with, uh, is that, what did I say, Mount Zion? Zebulon. Wait a minute, in Zebulon? Okay, I don't know where I'm going to be. <laughs> Zebulon? Is it Zebulon? Well, I'm going to be at Mount Zion, but they're going to be... We're going to be somewhere. I guess I'm following somebody. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. Anyway, y'all remember us. Uh, Are you glad, glad church? You came from heaven to work to show the way on the earth to the cross by death today from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on Have a great Sunday, church. Have a great Sunday.